Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash Tales from Retail. And today we have for you a fresh set of stories about crazy people. But before we start, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Attempted stealing turned to assault charge. Background. I work at a service station, a gas station, usually doing a pretty wide range of shift times, the store isn't located in a bad area, but we still get more than our fair share of customers who might need reminding they actually have to pay for things before attempting to leave. We're told by managers that we should remind them of such, but if they get too confrontational or insist on leaving, we're to simply call the cops immediately, pull up the CCTV footage, and put that person on the ban from store list. So one fine rainy afternoon, I'm the only one out front, my co-workers in the back rearranging fridges and other stock were mostly quiet, so I'm doing some paperwork behind the till when in comes crazy lady CL. From the minute CL came in, she looked pretty shifty. So of course, I'm keeping a discreet eye on her as she meanders through the aisles. I watch as CL shoves a whole range of items into her jumper before she comes up to the till. The only thing she places down to pay for is an ice cream, and she asks for some smokes. As is procedure, I go through with the transaction and wait until the CL turns to leave the store, making her intention to steal clear. Me. Excuse me, ma'am. You'll either need to return the items you've stashed in your jumper, or you'll need to pay for them. CL immediately started yelling, What items? I've not got any. Ma'am, this store is under video surveillance. I witnessed you place items in your jumper. If you won't return or pay for them, then I'll have to call the police. At this point, CL starts hurling abuse, cussing, generally being an upstanding citizen. She proceeds to open up her jacket and release everything she's taken to fall out on the floor and makes a point on stomping on the items like a behaviorally challenged three-year-old. Me, eager to de-escalate considering how she's responded so far. Thank you, ma'am. Please feel free to go. This sets her off even worse. She throws the ice cream she just bought at me, although it's still in the wrapper, while I'm standing there trying to process the fact that I've just been hit in the chest by a frozen dessert, the crazy lady's going for the shelf filled with two liter bottles of soft drink that's set next to the door. Then she begins hurling them at me. Luckily, I'm able to duck into a nearby aisle, kind of panicking at this point, because me being a small female against a clearly deranged customer, it's not great odds. And if I did decide to defend myself via violence, I would no doubt be fired. Finally, after what seemed like a lifetime, I hear the bell above the door go off, a loud slapping noise, and the CL starts screeching like someone just shoved a hot iron under her fingernails. I decide to risk taking a peek to see what set her off. Thankfully, it's the police. Two officers are pinning this woman to the ground and are handcuffing her despite CL's best impression of a fish-out-of-water banshee hybrid. My co-worker had apparently heard the commotion and called the police. Luck was on our side in that a patrol car was only a street over. With CL struggling the entire way, they managed to cuff her and get her into the car. To finish off a lengthy story, when asked, I did agree to have charges pressed because, honestly, if someone is going to go that psychotic with that little provocation, they probably need either help or to just straight up not be on the streets. Great customer service. You protected yourself, you didn't accuse her until you knew for sure she was shoplifting, and you decided to press charges. And our next story. You can't uncut keys, ma'am. So I'm a locksmith. I both go out on calls and stay at the shop where we sell locks, keys, safes, all kinds of stuff. It's just me and my dad that work here. So this happened a few years ago, but you usually remember the really fun customers. We were doing some cleanup around the shop when a middle-aged woman came in and slammed a rather expensive key down and says she wants to return it. CL for crazy lady, M for me. Me. Is there a problem with it? No, you made this key for me when I lost my keys last month, but I found my key, so I don't need this one anymore. I'm sorry, but if there's nothing wrong with the key, we can't refund you. I said it was an expensive key earlier. It was for a mid-2000s Mitsubishi that had a remote head. The key chipsets we sell are $20 plus programming, and the remote heads are more depending on the make and model of the car. If I remember correctly, her key was around $80 for the key itself, not counting the service charge to go make it when she lost hers. Total cost about 220 bucks, which she wanted the full refund of for whatever reason. 
Well, can't you just uncut the key and sell it to someone else? No, ma'am, we can't uncut keys. Plus, it's been programmed to your car, so we couldn't reuse it anyway. Oh, go get your manager so I can speak with him. My dad was around the corner in the back room and heard the whole thing, so as she said this, he poked his head around the corner with a chipper, Hi, what can I do for you? He then gave the same answers, pretty much word for word, until she's visibly angry that we won't give her 200 bucks. Is the owner here? I'm not leaving without some kind of refund. My dad's more amused than irritated at this point, and he says, Sure, let me get him for you, and then heads into the back. He's back there for a few seconds, then pokes his head around the corner, this time wearing his reading glasses, and says, Hi, what can I do for you? CL is fuming now. Do you think I'm an idiot? Me, internally. Yeah, a little bit. Me, externally. No, no, not at all. Unfortunately, neither of the three of us will be able to give you a refund, seeing as it's been over 30 days and there's no actual issues with the key. I'm sorry we couldn't help you any further. Well, I hope you're happy that you lost a customer. Then she leaves, forgetting to pick up her key sitting on the counter. About five minutes later, she walks back in without saying a word, picks up the key, and leaves. But not before my dad chimed in with, Have a nice day. And our next story. You don't know that word? Well then, obviously, you know nothing of this language. I used to work at a Brazilian supermarket in Florida. The customers were pretty much all Brazilians, leading to almost everyone speaking Brazilian, Portuguese. My parents are from there, but I was born in North America, and although I do know how to speak Portuguese, sometimes my American accent bleeds through, and sometimes I don't know a word or two. People usually understand, but not this one lady. Boy, did she have something to say. I was behind the customer service desk, so I couldn't leave, but the lady asked me where something was. It was around the corner near a certain shelf. I couldn't remember what the word for shelf was, so I think I said fixture that hold things or something like that fixture that hold things. What is that? Do you even speak Portuguese? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, but I forgot the word for that. But what you're looking for is right around it. Keep in mind the shelf was inside of both of us, but she didn't want to look. You don't speak Portuguese. Get me someone else to help. I'm a little confused at this point. I mean, it's just one word that I didn't know, but my manager happened to appear and I figured she's not busy. Keep in mind, this is all in perfect Portuguese. Maria, would you be able to help this woman? Apparently, I don't speak Portuguese, so I'm not able to communicate with her. She doesn't understand anything I'm saying because even though it sounds like Portuguese, she says it's not. So honestly, I'm not really sure what language I'm speaking, but that really doesn't matter, I guess. She needs help finding item, which I said was over there, but I guess she needs to hear that in Portuguese, which again, I apparently don't speak. Well, it turned out Maria was well aware of this customer and she complained about everything, so she wasn't surprised that she was acting like an idiot. She almost stopped as she had to stifle some laughter during my monologue. The lady just kind of looked like someone had slapped her with an idiot stick. Okay, if you said fixture that holds things instead of shelf, I would guess English was your second language, but would be more impressed if you said fixture that holds things rather than saying shelf. And our last story for today. I own you. Hi everyone, I work at a big box retail store that charges people a membership fee in order to shop at our store. Due to this fee, some customers act very entitled, which is to be expected, I guess. Here's an interaction I had last week with an entitled B word, AKA EB. I get a call on the walkie saying there's a problem in one of our healthy food aisles. I quickly make my way over there and hear EB yelling at a fellow employee who I will refer to as Ryan, EB. What do you mean you don't have any more quinoa? Ryan. Sorry, ma'am, I've checked the computer and it's showing we do not have any more in stock. EB. You people are so useless. What's the point of paying to shop here if you people are good for nothing? This is where I cut in. Hi there, as Ryan already told you, there's no more quinoa. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yes, give me some damn quinoa. Sorry, ma'am, there isn't any in the aisle and someone already checked to see if it's in stock. You can come back tomorrow. I own you. I demand that you bring me quinoa now. I don't care if you need to go to another store and get it. I want my quinoa and I want it now. I pay the price. You're no more than my maid. The amount of anger going through me was incredible. I've never dealt with someone this hostile and ridiculous in my life. I'm usually a pretty calm person, but after being mistreated like this, something inside me snapped. Just because you pay to shop here does not give you the right to act like a stuck up bee. She was stunned. Her jaw dropped and she turned completely white. 
This didn't last more than five seconds because she immediately started to turn bright red. I'm gonna have you fired. I'm gonna fire you. You can't talk to me like that. I walked away and expected to be fired, but I didn't care. I felt relieved. About 15 minutes later, I find out my manager had heard the entire thing, revoked her membership, and banned her from the store. Ah, sweet justice. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.